Having reached complete and absolute peace of mind was not my goal, it just happened. Up until that time, only a glimpse of it was reached. Completely by accident, the glimpse took place as I was reclined on a lawn chair, outside of an acquaintance's mobile home, near Disney World. I had taken a bike ride from Miami to Orlando and when I arrived, no one was home. As I sat and waited for someone to arrive, I closed my eyes and began to listen to a single cricket. It became so clear and loud in my mind, as I listened to and heard every vibration. I had listened so intently for a period of time and had no thoughts of my own, that in an instant I became aware of the fact that I could no longer feel my body and that I had indeed not yet thought of my own. From the moment I decided to actually hear the sounds of the cricket, my entire being was now only the vibrations, which I could see. At this point, realizing I was indeed having an out-of-body experience, be fully awake and aware of where I was. A thought crossed my mind, is it possible to get even closer to this sound and not have to return to the physical and how do I return to my body? I decided to shake my left arm, a strange sensation to say the least. I opened my eyes and sat up completely dumbfounded over what had just happened. It was about three years later, before remembering this event had ever happened. The reason this event came to memory was because it happened again. Seated in a recliner at home listening to music, the same circumstances and sensations occurred and at that moment I flashed back to my encounter with the cricket. This realization snapped me out of it, instantly. With a head full of thoughts. How did I do this? Could I do this at will and can I teach others to achieve this state of mind? It was quite a surprise to me that I had forgotten all about that cricket, let alone it was a cricket near Disney World. What a great sensation, so I decided to take some time and figure out if I could develop a step-by-step -step way to repeat the sensation. I also wanted to know exactly what part of my body was the last I could feel. Answering all of these questions did make it a little more difficult to return to this state. Your own thoughts do make it more difficult to disconnect, but I persisted until the following events took place. Reclined. With the music on, trying to hear every note, I let my body settle to its lowest point, actually feeling dropping sensations and wave after wave. Letting my eyes settle to a position which seemed to let them float independent of my senses. Seal the mouth closed, with all air slightly sucked out and with the tongue filling the space behind closed teeth. At this point making sure my entire body was in a comfortable position without any pulling or extra pressure or tension. This includes folds in the skin as well as hair. At this stage, any readjustment was fine. After several minutes of settling, readjusting and relaxing my nervous system, it was very important to remain awake being sure to listen and hear every vibration of the music. The goal is to put the body to sleep and awaken the mind. My first attempt to achieve disconnect while recalling all of the steps to do so did make it more difficult. But I persisted, only to realize so many things had to take place in order to do it just right. First of all, twitches and facial muscles had to be the first to cease. Emotions or reactions to sound must not reflect in the face. Next is the awareness of your entire body as a whole. If you are aware of motion in the nervous system, then concentrate on a part of the body, which has completely settled and not moved since the start. Generally, it is the feet, or perhaps a hand, in which you can no longer feel fingers touching fingers. Let this area spread, realizing how much of your body you actually cannot sense, but be aware of the fact that these portions are on their way to spreading. During this phase of the process, continue to hear the music and all of its vibrations, as you take inventory of your physical being. Once comfortable, now feeling or being aware that sound and thought are not located or emanating from the region of the head and face, the sensation is that the entire physical being is the receptor of thought and sound. It seems awareness of thought and sound can be moved anywhere within the confines of your physical being. Perhaps the most difficult task is to not become aware of your breathing and expanding chest. During my first attempt, I tried every breathing pattern, long slow deep breaths, short shallow breaths and any other combination I could think of, until I fell into a rhythm which, to this day I do not know, worked. 
I simply did not become overly focused on it. Certainly, by this point, you will have become aware of sensations which you've never experienced. Know you are on your way, but never stop listening to and hearing the music, delving ever deeper into all of the separate sounds and vibrations which make it up and the fact that you are truly hearing them all at once. You might even wonder, why hasn't anyone ever told me about this sooner? Just one hint, if you ever have to swallow, for any reason, before or after reaching this point, stop and try over at a later time. It's an action of the physical which cannot be overcome during an attempt. Then it began to happen, the moment I had been searching for. The moment of disconnection and the knowledge of which part of my body I would last be connected with. Without warning the feeling was as though there was a very tight rubber band stretched over the top of my head, behind my ears and under my jaw. This area began to move forward with ever increasing speed, as though the rubber band were going to slip off the front of my face. That is exactly what happened, when it reached the point that an actual rubber band would have snapped off of my face, it did. But it didn't just snap off of my face, the sensation of it leaving was physical, past, and beyond my face. I heard a loud snap, with the intensity of a bullwhip cracking and saw a brilliant spark, at a point just in front of the bridge of my nose. How freaking incredible this was! I had now separated my consciousness from its physical self. I was now only the music I was listening to, if you want to call it that. Listening was not exactly how one in this state would classify it, you have to be there to appreciate it. In the simplest of terms, I was seeing and feeling it, in all of its splendor and detail. In detail which would make the virtual reality of today's most sophisticated computers seem like a black and white television showing of the Lone Ranger. I was able to reach this state reclined in a chair or flat on my back, in bed within 20 minutes. But this ability was only there for a few weeks, because peace of mind had slipped away due to circumstances surrounding me. I was informed that business was slow and my job could not support me full time and I would have two more weeks to train someone to replace me part time. During this two week period, attempts to return to the higher plane were fruitless. Once I was no longer employed, the realization that I was so incredibly lucky to be 21 years old and living in South Florida at the time, the odds against it were incredible. Considering how many people had lived and died before now and how many people would do the same, long after I was gone and the environments they had a chance of living in, the odds were astronomical. An acceptance of this reality helped ease my mind so I was going to return to the place I had been before. I had tried every position, before this last attempt with no success. So this time I was going to do my best to create the perfect circumstances for success. I spread a sheet on the day bed in the living room, making sure to lay it flat, as well as myself naked. It took a moment or two to make sure there were no wrinkles on the sheet under me, no tugs on my skin or hair. The music was on, dark side of the moon. All was going exceptionally well, step by step and then it happened. The disconnect was about to take place, the rubber band effect started. But at the moment I expected to hear the snap and see the spark. There was a great flash of brilliant white light instead. Now, instantly viewing a sheet of the purest brilliant white light I have ever seen, where I knew my body should be. The realization that I was viewing it, not from within, but completely detached from it, did not seem to shock or surprise me. In that instant I truly knew what had been accomplished. I had separated my consciousness from my body and was now viewing my spirit. My point of view was from 45 degrees and slightly above my face and past the top of my head. I knew where my consciousness was and where my spirit was, but I had no sense of where my body actually was. Without hesitation and for some unknown reason I began to think about my left knee. Much to my surprise, a black hole or void of light developed in this sheet of light, just where my knee should be. As soon as I stopped thinking about the area of my knee, it immediately shrank and became brilliant again. I seemed to have all of the answers. And knowledge surrounding the reason for my existence and the purpose of my life. At that moment knowing I had somehow tapped into universal knowledge, with this thought I began to shake my left arm. 
now finding myself sitting up on the edge of the day bed, with a mission and purpose for my life, I got dressed and went for a walk, with only one regret. I was so intent on viewing my spirit, I neglected to look up and around myself to see what was out there, and perhaps seeing who hell be viewing me in this state. Evidently someone had been viewing me in that state and I did in fact get their attention. It was some 18 years later that I became aware of one of those somebodies. It was mid-afternoon as I was lying on the water bed at home, in my wife's condominium, face down with my arms under my body and hands palms up against the front of my thighs. I lay there in a completely peaceful and content state of mind. At no point did I fall asleep. My eyes were closed and I had barely gotten comfortable when I heard a voice coming from one of the guys on duty standing about three feet from my head and to my right say, get up, I instantaneously considered how. But without wasting a heartbeat or single thought or movement of my body I raised straight up and above the bed by about a foot and a half. At the moment I reached this point the voice said, go through the wall so I did. Still in a horizontal position I floated straight through the wall, head first. As I passed through the wall, all I can say is it was kind of like watching the Starship Enterprise travel through some sort of warp field or plasma distortion. All in muddy browns and earth tone hues, once through, I popped out and was flying above grass-covered slopes. This was completely awesome. I had flown in dreams and had out-of-body experiences in the past and knew that I could control my speed and elevation just by thinking about it. But I had never been told to do so. I was flying several yards above the ground or should I say well manicured grass of rolling hills and slopes. Off to my left at the tops of one of the rises, I saw what could have been a very large building, dwelling or even a city. Its size and proportions were not exactly of my concern. But I do remember what it looked like and could draw it design, even today, some twenty years later, now completely aware of the circumstances I found myself in. I decided to see just what my capabilities were. I flew at varying speeds and heights. Higher and fast than I had ever gone before and with such control, never possible by me before, I decided to accelerate upward and see how high I could fly. At the peak of my flight I saw what appeared to be crystal, silver or shiny orbs. About three of them spread just ahead of me and to my right, then it happened. Well it is kind of anticlimactic. Music lyrics of an earthly nature popped into my head. Something about crystal ships and starship troopers. And wham I was back in my body, the best I can figure is because of words and thoughts of this physical world, I was slammed back into my body, to say the least, I was quite impressed and wanted to thank the guy on duty which popped into my bedroom, so here I am formally thanking you, I would like to warn you the listener that, of course not all the guys on duty are of the positive polarity. No fooling. Doe, this brings me to the day them other guys tried to warn me, or just let me know what they and their negative polarity earthlings would cause me to endure. It was about five years after my flying experience when these little demons let me know they were also aware of me. No joke, about five or six years later, I for very good reasons, walked out on my wife about a year prior to the following incident. I was staying with a co-worker in his apartment. I had lost my apartment previously to moving in with him, for some of those obvious events in my life. His name was Mike and he was what some might call a skinhead. Not really, but he had perhaps one of the most vulgar mouths you would ever hear in public. Children, old ladies, your mother your father, in restaurants, movies, it didn't matter. I had to sleep on his couch and this meant I could only sleep after he and his friends were finally done with the living room, at any hour of the night, it was around midday as I was laying on my back and glad to finally be stretching out, fully awake and aware of where I was, all of a sudden I was being dragged over a counter by these, what I can only call little demons. Short little creatures which took many of them to drag me over the countertop, okay now, I've had out of body experiences, dreams and even some nightmares, but nothing like this. I was feeling actual pain as they scratch and clawed and even bit at my hands and arms. The pain is what was so real, I had never felt pain such as this in my astral or spirit body. After shaking myself back to my physical body I inspected my hands and arms and was just so glad they didn't leave any marks, 
Little did I know back then that this was just a warning. A warning in the sense that my future life in Fort Lauderdale, away from the sheltered life of my mother and or my wife, was going to be like, kind of like, my new friends and associates were about to chew me up and spit me out, as so many new kids in town are, the wrong people, places and things have me now living and just waiting for the whole system to come down around us. This work is dedicated to the guys on duty, the G.O.D. of my understanding.